If you're planning on making big power and putting it in your G-body, there's one thing you need to know about the rear end on these cars. Because the 80s weren't known for power, these cars came with a 7.5 inch 10 bolt, which really isn't that stout if you ever plan on making big power. I've ruined that rear end three times with nearly 400 horse. But what makes these rear ends so weak? Let's dig into this one, which is on its very last legs and about to break, which is why it got pulled out of the El Camino in favor of a 12 bolt. So let's get the gear oil drained out of this thing and take it apart, and I'll show you what's about to go bad. So this is the inside of the seven and a half inch 10 bolt. As you can see, I was maybe one pass away from complete and total destruction. Now, what makes this rear end unique uh, for this car is that I have a mini spool in here and C-clip axles. Not a good combination because if the axle breaks, uh, I'm losing the axle, the wheel's gonna go out the side. It's a bad deal, but no one made a, a C-clip eliminator for a seven and a half inch 10 bolt, so I just continued to live on borrowed time. So uh, the reason why the seven and a half inch 10 bolt is not that tough is because when you put uh, numerically high gears in, these are a set of four tens, the tooth to tooth contact between the ring gear and the pinion gear is actually very small. So what that means is that a lot more force is concentrated through a smaller and smaller area. And what I'm actually seeing on this is that it was been breaking for a little bit of time, just judging by the uh, stress marks that I can see off of uh, you know the grain structure and the metal, uh, the little bits of chunk that I found. I still haven't found all the pieces, but uh, what I'm seeing there is it's been breaking for some time. And if this tooth let go, that tooth, that tooth, every tooth around it was only a matter of a pass or two away from complete and total destruction. So let's get this mini spool out and I'll slide an axle out and I'll show you another problem that these seven and a half inch 10 bolts have. All right, so the C-clips are lost in the differential. I will fish those out with a little magnet in just a minute. But a couple of things I've noticed in pulling this out, the cross pin, which I've had trouble with before, you always wanna make sure you have a hardened one. This one's doing okay. I have broken the cross pin, but the mini spool, my goodness, it was showing some uh, signs of it was uh, getting worn too. Mini spools and C-clips, uh, shouldn't be a thing, but they are and yes, I took my life into my own hands with this But the axles I wanted to show you this because the seven and a half inch ten bolt doesn't have a very stout axle I want to say this is like a 26 spline axle. I'd have to count But anyways, this is off of the right side. The splines are nice and straight uh, This is off the left side And if you look down those splines ever so careful, you can see that I'm starting was starting to twist the axle uh, my machinist eyeball says that was about 30 thousandths worth of twist there. So I was actually uh, twisting this axle. Like, duh, axles twist, right? Yes, we know. But that means I was actually starting to disrupt this metal enough that I was starting to wear out the splines and twist the axle, meaning that this could have been a point for breakage if continued on. Something I do want to mention about those axles, those are not stock axles. Those are Moser engineering axles. Those are an aftermarket, better alloy axle than the, the original stock ones that were in that seven and a half inch 10 bolt. So I'm twisting those. I can only imagine what would have happened to a set of stock axles. So realistically, these differentials have a couple of major pain points. The axles are too small for any serious power. The ring and pinion tooth contact is too small. They're again for serious power. Other things to consider, and this is you know consistent across all the GM 10 bolt, 12 bolts, is the axle tubes can slip inside that center section, you know, cast housing. Now, I'm not saying that every single G body out there needs to step up the rear end, because if you're just using the thing and cruising it and enjoying it without applying huge power, big sticky drag slicks and high launch, high powered launches, the seven and a half inch 10 bolt can be a perfectly serviceable axle. Now I've heard of people that uh, have an open rear end and go and do a burnout and blow the thing to pieces. But that's because when one wheel is not spinning and the other is spinning because of the way the spider gear wor works, 
you're practically 2xing the speed that that one wheel is going and you just exceed the uh, the strength of stuff and it goes to pieces. So just because a seven and a half inch 10 bolt is under a car doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be changed. It just means it's something to be aware of and take a look at regularly and ensure that it's in good working order. Now, this housing has been good to me. I've blown this thing up three times. How has that been good to you? Well, it survived longer than people told me a seven and a half inch 10 bolt should last. It managed to uh, survive under my El Camino for, geez, I've been racing it since 2005 at the earliest. So, I mean, almost 20 years of abuse and only three catastrophic failures. I don't think I'm doing too bad on that thing. And so that right there is one reason why I stepped up the rear end of this car. It was howling, and now I can see why. I had one tooth that was uh, nearly gone, and I'm sure there were others that were about to go. This has got a 12 bolt under it now, but that doesn't mean it's like perfect in every way, shape, or form. You've got options. Uh, there's a lot of kits that are doing 8.8 Ford conversions. You can put a nine inch under these uh, 12 bolts if you can find them. I lucked into this one. It was all ready to rock, but there's a lot of rear end options to put in these cars and get more strength out of the back of the car. Some people will equate strength to reliability. I don't know. That thing seemed to be pretty reliable. The seven and a half inch 10 bolt under my uh, boring 3.8 Buick in my 85 Regal, that one's been perfectly reliable, but all things considered, that seven and a half inch 10 bolt served me well and I know that if you need to step up your game, you certainly can. So thanks for watching. Let's get out to the garage and go build something.